as well as Sunday. If you've been a victim of water leaking into your basement, which I know a lot of folks we've talked to have had that issue, well, you can do a few things to prevent more damage. And Nick takes us inside his basement for a lesson what to do and what not to. As a homeowner of a home that was built in the 1950s, when Mother Nature starts unleashing all kinds of rain, I'm the guy who's going to get nervous. Come on down here, and I want to show you a couple of things here. Now, because of that, you know, we've had some work already done to this house. We've had some epoxy uh, uh, done here to fill in the cracks on the homes, and that's done a great job here. But with all of the rain that we have had over the last what, four or five days here, we've had as many, as much as uh, eight, nine, ten, uh, ten, eight cases. The water's going to find its way in somehow, some way, and it did to my house. Right here, this corner crack right here was not one on, that was repaired by the epoxy crews, and this is where water found its way into the house. It was coming out of the wall like a fountain in the city of fountains, and it was running down the floor here, and, of course, it got onto some carpet here. You see that squish right here? It's still wet. So the pad and the carpet, uh, not in good shape. Let's talk to John Collins here. He is with Puro Clean here. Uh, John, I imagine you've been kind of busy over the last uh, few days. How many calls have you guys had? It's been quite overwhelming, and we have quite the backup list going, yeah, too. I bet you do. And a lot of homeowners dealing with what I just described here, wet carpets. What should somebody do if they've got wet carpets in their basements? One of the main things you want to do, and especially when there's a backlog of calls, is remove the pad. Get rid of it. It's hard to save carpet uh, with pad in there against the concrete. So pull it away from your walls and trim and get rid of the pad. We can usually save the carpet, but the pad's got to go. <laughs> All right, John, follow me. We're going to go further back here uh, into the basement here, and we're going, to, uh, we're going to step out in front of here. But Kyle is going to show us a couple of do's and don'ts here that you recommend to all your customers, right? Right. In the basement, you don't want to store in cardboard boxes. Uh, it just wicks water. Everything in it gets soaking wet. You do want to store everything in plastic bins or up off the ground, cinder blocks with two-by-eights, shelving, whatever, but keep it off the ground. Okay, and you also have a pretty cool, interesting tool right there that you use uh, when you come out to uh, customers' homes here. To, uh, show us what this tool does. Yeah, so when we come out to homes, we use moisture meters and infrared cameras, and that allows us to trace the moisture and find out what's wet. Because usually homeowners think it's an isolated area, and then once we show them through thermal imaging and moisture meters, it really quite extends further than they thought. Because what items dry are actually quite wet, and mm -hmm. so that's what allows us to track where the water goes. All right, let's see if I've done my sump pump the right way here. I've got my sump pump over here in the corner, and I think this is one of the lower spots uh, in the basement here. But judging from what you've seen from homeowners before and what you recommend, does that look like a good setup right there? It definitely is. You want to make sure you have the appropriate sump pump for your house. And, you know, reference your local plumber, find out, because a lot of homes nowadays are built with 9, 10-foot ceilings in the, in the basements. You've got to make sure you have enough horsepower to not only keep up with the flow, but have enough force to get it up 12 feet and out of the house. Mm -hmm. And some sump pumps are built not to be continuously ran, so you want to make sure you're looking for that too. How about the sandbags? You brought some sandbags in here to, to show us. What would those be used for? One is if you know you have an influx of water and you want to isolate it from getting throughout your house, set up a nice dam or a perimeter to keep the water towards your sump pump and as it gets fixed, or it'll limit the amount of damage that seeps out across the basement. Okay, and a, and a dry vac or a wet vac, I guess, is always a pretty handy tool, right? That's key, too. <laughs> if you have a wet vac available and a mitigation cam company can't come right away, start uh, shop vacing and getting it out. And like I said, pull back your carpet, pull back your pad, and just start sucking that water out. I wish I had one about uh, three or four days ago. I could have used it for sure. John, uh, thanks for taking time out on a busy time for you, and I know those customers are going to be happy once you pull up in their driveway. So. Thank you. And if you've got water problems out there, uh, see an expert right there. They'll uh, show you the way to best mitigate your problems.